a massive move is coming on Bitcoin and on the NASDAQ. Let's have a look because last week we saw this massive drop, right, on Bitcoin. And also we've seen collapses in Apple, in Microsoft, in so many stocks, right? This is a very interesting development. Finally, right, Bitcoin is breaking down from this rising wedge, which I've been warning about. And of course, we've been for the NASDAQ, for the NASDAQ stocks, right? We have been spot on so far, uh, calling pretty much the exact pickle top of the turn in the NASDAQ. And now I do believe some major developments are happening on the NASDAQ, right? Uh, and what's going forward with, uh, with Bitcoin? This is Pablo Hemian. You know, welcome to the, uh, my investment club. So here we go. First, uh, I'll just to update you guys on what's happening with Bitcoin. So this is one of those instances where I was talking about a, a, um, uh, a drop coming in Bitcoin, but I got the timing wrong. Okay, so basically uh, what happened is, um, is that, see, if you're in my Discord, you'd see that I've been calling this a large rising wedge, right? See how what we have here is in blue, a large rising wedge, right? Large rising wedge. Usually rising wedges tend to break down. Now I thought it had one more bounce here and comes to about here and then break down, right? I wasn't, wasn't 100% as you can tell from my last video. I said that um, probably uh, we have like a 70% chance it breaks down and a uh, 30, you know, or 35% chance, sorry, I said it was 35% chance it would break down and 65% chance it would bounce. So wasn't correct on that one. However, I always couch it in terms of possibilities and probabilities and I never say something is 100%. Uh, and that was one of those key instances now, the reason, why, the reason why we said that, the reason why is because there was a rising, a falling, right? A falling wedge on the US dollar. So it was happen, happening simultaneously. So that's why, oh, hang on one sec. And that's why it also made sense, right? So essentially, look at this. This is what we call like a wedge. Wedge is kind of like a small triangle, right? This wedge was going downwards, a falling wedge. Usually it tends to break up and that's pretty much exactly what's been happening, right? It's broken above, right? The resistance I had, which was low 103s. And now it looks like it's gonna get to about this 104.9, 105-ish area. Um, falling wedges tend okay. to break. I found this on the web for is the area M. All right. Check it out. No, thank you. God. Falling wedges tend to break upwards and rising wedges tend to break downwards. So let's have a look at it again. Uh, this was a rising wedge. See the two blue lines, rising wedges tend to break downwards. So I didn't get the exact timing right, right? I thought there could be with a 65 to 70% chance, another bounce before it comes down, but it came down ahead of time. And this was a surprise because see the US dollar only broke through kind of now. Well, you could say, depends on how you draw the US dollar, you could say they kind of broke through at the same time. Usually, as I have been saying for quite a while now, uh, if you've been watching my um, uh, you know, videos or if you are in my uh, Discord, um, what I've been saying is that US dollar is usually kind of works the opposite way to, the, um, to Bitcoin and to risk assets. When US dollar breaks up, then Bitcoin and NASDAQ and all those uh, risk assets like crypto uh, and tech stocks tend to break down. So that's one signal we have to be very aware of right now because the US dollar is breaking up. I think it's gonna get to the 105-ish area. Uh, that's obviously gonna be bad for, um, for crypto, for Bitcoin and for you know, other risk assets such as tech stocks. Um, so Bitcoin, just before we, we move on to the, the NASDAQ and the tech stocks, this is what I think is gonna happen uh, with with Bitcoin, so um, my my thinking is that we have a three tap. What I mean by that is basically we have one tap here, one tap here, and maybe one more tap, right? It might go as deep as 
247, 24.7, uh, somewhere around between 24.7 to 25.0, uh, because you've got so many old tops around here. So, and the bottom here, right? Uh, it's probably more if we go back further enough. Um, right, so there's, you know, this is a very significant area, obviously. Uh, one more tap I'm leaning towards, doesn't have to, but doesn't have to get there, but I'm leaning towards one more tap here and then bounce up. Um, probably something like, maybe if we extend this line, so then we get a Bitcoin bounce that hits this line, something like here. Uh, that would make it t low 28, 28.1, 28.2, somewhere around there, then come down. Um, chances are if US dollar breaks out like this, then chances are it bounces here. If we're lucky, we get to low 28, bounces here to about 24, 25 again, and that will give us a shoulder, head, and then shoulder pattern, right? And then possibly, it doesn't have to break down, but if it breaks down, then obviously we're headed to around 19 to 20K again. If it breaks down, that would set up a shoulder, head, shoulder pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder doesn't have to go that way it can still bounce up depending on you know what the news is at the time i will give you guys more updates now uh about the, the nasdaq stocks so uh with the nasdaq stocks i think uh, everyone is aware who's been in my discord or who's been watching my videos and by the way these longer videos of market analysis i make goes out to my discord first and usually after about two days i release it to the public but what's happening with the NASDAQ stock is, um, is as I've been telling you guys, right? It's so overextended right now, the NASDAQ, and purely on about seven stocks, right? Which is, you know, NVIDIA, uh, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, all the so-called AI seven stocks. They've been so extended that it was very easy for them to pull back. And I called the pickle top of the pullback right, about four weeks ago. I said earnings season's coming in and it could easily disappoint. And even when earnings, right, is higher than what's predicted, what's anticipated by the market, it can still go down, right? Why? It's because it's just so overextended, right? In fact, the, the, the fact that prices go down, even though when you beat earnings and revenue expectations, goes to show that this market is very ex overextended and it's, a, it's about to, it's due for a further pullback. So we called, if you've been watching my videos for the last couple of weeks, we've called, um, uh, you know, Apple, Microsoft, uh, you know, Tesla, uh, all these stocks to drop, and they've hit my target almost to a T. Um, and then NVIDIA came along. My forecast was within my Discord that I think they would beat earnings, right? Because earnings, EPS, is very easy to manipulate. But however, now, um, and then it popped up 9%, overnight, right, before the markets opened again, because the, the earnings report came in after hours, right, between, and by the next morning when the markets opened, it tanked all the way back to the same closing price as the day before. Not only that, it also did it on a very large, heavy volume. Here, I'll show you guys. So let's go uh, NVIDIA. Um, look at this. So basically, NVIDIA, this is the star stock, by the way. This is the, the star of the whole AI movement, you know, made it like a 4X run. So be careful if this one doesn't perform, people are gonna freak out. So look, uh, what happened is, as you know from watching my videos, I said the support is at 400, it came $3 shy, shy bounced from 403, right? And then went to uh, 500, right? A 25% bounce. And then basically look at this. On, this day, when good news came out, it popped up on the open and it came all the way back down, right? Virtually no change since the previous day. And look at the selling volume. This is the largest volume, second largest volume since what? Since like the start of the year. So on very large volume, they sold very good news because NVIDIA came in very strongly, beats, you know, uh, earnings, beats um, um, forecasts for revenue and has great guidance. And yet it still dumps like this. So that's not looking good, that's, that's weak. We've got Friday coming up now. Um, I'm taping this, uh, you know, heading into a Friday morning in the US. 
So um, that's see how Nvidia closes for the week. I'm thinking it meanders something like this down to the old support trend line at 420, 425-ish area, uh, and then we have a bounce. Or if that breaks, then again, we have this crucial, crucial 400 area to defend. Uh, if it breaks that, we could see a shoulder, head, shoulder here, and somewhere later in the year, right, comes back to close this gap to 300. And if it does that, right, then basically people will be questioning, is the bull market over, right? Um, my, my thinking has always been that the NASDAQ after this pullback has one more pump, has one more pump, and then basically I think it's, uh, it'll be one of those major tops, right? It's, it's gonna be one of those major tops that we don't see for, for a long time. Um, we, we should see a, you know, like a, it's probably a three year, five year top once the NASDAQ pulls back and goes up again, right? Somewhere, uh, not gonna guess here, but somewhere maybe a double top, maybe higher than a double top, and then when it comes down, that be, should be a huge top for, for the NASDAQ and for the, for the US world, uh, stock markets. So let's have a look at the NASDAQ and, um, and how the pullback is, is happening right now. So basically, I have drawn two channels on the, uh, on the NASDAQ. First, it traveled in this channel, right? And then it accelerated into this channel. And if you are with me in my Discord or on Twitter on, on a lot of my videos, uh, in, on Gen 23rd, which is around here, I had called a big bounce or a small bull market for US stocks and for Bitcoin. And that's exactly what we have seen. A small bull, you might wanna call it that, or you might wanna call it a big bounce because it hasn't even taken out the old high yet, right? Now, and this level was always gonna be crucial. We had a number of old tops here. QQQ, QQQ, this QQQ is the NASDAQ ETF, right? It's essentially, it moves exactly like the NASDAQ. You've hit it once, popped above, right? Couldn't hold, comes back, and hits the bottom of this, um, this trend line, rising channel, bounces off, retests this level again, and this is when the NVIDIA reports really good results, but the market dumps, right? The market dumps on the NASDAQ. And you know all the AI AI seven stocks go down, and so basically it's um, it's looking like a rejection of this crucial three seventy two area on the QQQ, the Nasdaq ETF. And if that happens, depending on the close today, it looks like this. We might get one or two more bounces, but it looks like this channel, this rising, big rising channel that's held the Nasdaq for the entire year is probably, probably gonna get broken. You know, uh, by the time you guys see this on YouTube, you already know what, what would happen. You know, I'm right now speaking on a Friday morning in the U United States, um, and I'm thinking eventually it breaks down from this rising, um, rising channel, uh, and then it, you've got this neckline. I've drawn it in red, this massive red line, uh, red line here. That's the neckline to a potential shoulder, head, shoulder here, right? And then it can bounce from here. So it, it's, that's already hitting my target of low 350s. Last time we spoke, I said he's heading to low 350s, right? So it should get to about 353 there. It's already kind of gotten there, 354. Um, once it hits there, it could bounce, having hit my target already. Or I think there's a decent chance, over 50%, it might go through here. Then you've got a shoulder, head, shoulder breakdown, and then that's triggered. Once that triggers and breaks down, we calculate the height of the head to neckline and extend it from here, it gives us around 322, right, 322. And guess what, 322 is also very close to the bottom of this trend line. Remember this, this trend line that we started with? A slower trend line, so it could break up and then come back and get saved on this slower trend line and then pop up for one more one more attack, right? What I would call a blow off top on the NASDAQ, a blow off top and, um, uh, and then that's it. That's the, the major top for the next three, four, five years. Um, so whether it bounces here from three, low 350s as per my first target, 
a double top or even a higher top, blow off top and then comes down, or it actually scares everyone by bouncing off, you know, trigger this head and shoulders pattern by breaking the neckline and comes down to this 322 area and then continue, right? When everyone's scared and, and bearish again, goes into this massive bounce once again, right? Something like a double top or actually takes out the double top and that would be a blow off top that makes everyone bullish, but turns out recession was here after all. And then we have a major, major crash that would take three to five years to recover. Um, depends on if the Federal Reserve decides to print money or not. So um, if they don't, then um, if they don't print like crazy, crazy going to QE, then we're looking at a situation which could be similar to, you know, a mild uh, depression, mild depression, I say. Um, or at least a bad recession. If they do print a lot of money, then we're going to see um, a inflation come right back. Either way, the Fed is still kind of stuck, in my opinion. It's what I would call stagflation, um, where they have where you have inflation and recession kind of weak growth at the same time. Now, of course, people can um, people can you know disagree with that. Um, you know, a lot of people are thinking the Fed is doing well right now. Um, you know, controlling inflation and controlling um, uh, and uh, keeping up two percent growth at the same time right now. 